What's up squad and welcome to episode 8 of X Marks The Spot, your dedicated Xbox podcast here at youtube.com forward slash installation X. I'm your host, your captain, your one man band Sykes and I hope that whoever you are, wherever you are and whatever you may be doing that you are safe and well. Don't forget if you enjoyed this video podcast, please make sure you leave a like, you head over to Installation X and subscribe and you hit that bell for notifications of future uploads to support the channel on the road to 1000 subs. If you want to get involved in the show, then let me know your thoughts in the comment section. You can also send me your questions via email to xmarksthespotpodcast at gmail.com or tweet me at underscore installation underscore x with the best questions being added to the show. And don't forget that you can use our system calling all crewmates. A reminder, if you need some crewmates to aid you in your gaming experiences, then you can send me your gamer tag and a description of the games you play and the people you are looking for to xmarksthespotpodcast at gmail.com and I'll read them out at the start of every show. I hope you are well, squad. I hope you had a good week. I hope people are still remaining safe and well and healthy. Um, I've had a good week, actually. Um, it's been busy. I had a busy weekend again, so I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I've had to upload this a little bit late um, again, but um, duty calls for family and friends and dealing with lots of other things. Um, but yeah, it's been a good week. I've had played a lot of Minecraft Dungeons, which has been brilliant. And don't forget, you can check out my Minecraft Dungeons review over on Installation X. That is up. Um, get over there. See what you think. Let me know your thoughts on how you're getting on with Minecraft Dungeons. And I've also recently released an updated video for Sea of Thieves on the Lost Treasures update and all the events and little things that are coming to Sea of Thieves. Not really a massive update this time, it's been more of a quality of life update, but it's been a, a few changes that people should be aware of and lots of things you can get your hands on. Um, so we'll get straight back into the Xbox Treasure Chest of News. We have four items in the Xbox Treasure Chest this week and we will start off with the main one which is number one Xbox Series X is the most powerful and compatible next gen console with thousands of games at launch this comes via Xbox Wire and it also comes via Jason Ronald who is the director for program management for the Xbox Series X and he's written a, a little bit of a lengthy article but I think it's an important one to go through and dive into all the details so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through don't forget everything that I use as a source in this uh, episode I will leave in the description um, so you can link to it if you want to read it for yourselves in your own time. But I'll go through it and we can pick it apart towards the end. So, this is all Jason Ronald's words, so I'm not going to worry about quoting it. It's his article. Gaming leaves an indelible... In, oh, this is a great start. <laughs> Gaming leaves an indelible... Indelible? Indelible? We'll go with that. Indelible mark on us all. From the epic stories and universes we experience playing as our favourite heroes to the heat of intense competition, victory and defeat. Through the shared accomplishments we achieve as a worldwide community, gaming brings us together. Thousands of developers from across the globe are currently creating the next generation of transformative games, many of which can only be realised through the power and innovation of the Xbox Series X. We know that because Scorn and Medium developers have already said this. Led by Halo Infinite, our 15 Xbox Game Studio teams are hard at work creating the biggest and best lineup of exclusives in Xbox history. We are incredibly excited to show many of the new games in, develop in development for Xbox Series X soon. Preserving your gaming legacy as a subheading. As gamers, we also know how important it is to preserve and respect our ga gaming legacies. Your favourite games and franchises, your progression and achievements, and the friendships and communities you create through gaming should all move with you across generations. Not only that, your favourite gaming accessories and peripherals should also move forward with you as well. Good, because I've got a lot of Xbox One controllers now. <laughs> Our goal has always been to empower gamers to play the best versions of games from across four generations of Xbox at the launch of Xbox Series X. These principles were key to us from day one and influenced many of our design decisions as we started our journey to create the most powerful and compatible console ever. Compatibility Journey Our compatibility journey began with the announcement of Xbox 360 backwards compatibility coming to Xbox One at E3 2015. I clearly remember the first magical experience of jumping into one of my favourite Xbox 360 games, Final Fantasy VIII, and instantly resuming where I had left off years before with no time had passed at all. I was instantly transported back to the special time and all the great memories and personal connections I have made through gaming. The energy and passion from the community continues to motivate us to this day. For a tremendous amount of hard work, technical innovation and partnership with the industry's leading creators, we were not only able to bring more than 500 Xbox 360 games to Xbox One, we were able to go back even further into the archives and resurrect some of, our, some of your favourite franchises from the original Xbox. The very same team who created new innovative ways to preserve and enhance your existing catalogue of games on Xbox One is the team pushing the envelope again with Xbox Series X. Maintaining compatibility presents a massive technical challenge as fundamental system and chip architectures advance across generations. Developers highly optimise their games to the unique compatibilities and performance of a console to provide the best experience for their players. 
To make the Xbox Series X our most compatible console ever required both significant innovation in the design of the custom processor, as well as the unique design for the Xbox operating system and hypervisor at the heart of the next generation platform. More than 100,000 hours of playtesting already completed, thousands of games have already playable on the Xbox Series X today, from the biggest blockbusters to cult classics and fan favourites. Many of us in Team Xbox play on the Xbox Series X daily, very jealous, as our primary console and switching between generations is seamless. By the time we launch this holiday, the team will have spent well over 200,000 hours ensuring your game library is ready for you to jump in immediately. All games play better on the Xbox Series X. Not only should gamers be able to play all of these games from the past, but they should play better than ever before. Backwards compatible games run natively on the Xbox Series X hardware, running with the full power of the CPU, the GPU and the SSD. No boost mode, no downclocking, the full power of the Xbox Series X for each and every compatible backwards, uh, sorry, backwards compatible game. This means that all these titles run at the peak performance that they are originally designed for, many times even higher performance than the game saw on their original plat launch platform. Um, resulting in higher and more steady frame rates and rendering at their maximum resolution and visual quality. So they're going to run, obviously, way, way better than they originally did. Backwards compatible titles also see significant reductions in in-game load times from the massive leap in performance from our custom NVMe, NVMe SSD, which powers the Xbox Velocity architecture. As I play through my personal backlog, as part of our internal testing, all of the incredible games from Xbox One and earlier play best on Xbox Series X. The team was not content to just rely on increased performance, uh, hardware performance to improve your playing experience. The team developed new platform level capabilities to ensure all your games continue to get even better. In partnership with the Xbox Advanced Technology Group, Xbox Series X delivers a new innovative HDR reconstruction technique which enables the platform to automatically add HDR support to games. As this technique is handled by the platform itself, it allows us to enable HDR with zero impact to the game's performance and we can also apply it to Xbox 360 and original Xbox titles almost developed almost 20 years ago, well before the existence of HDR. In addition, the new quick resume fe uh, feature was designed to not only work with new games, but it also be enabled for backwards compatible titles. Quick resume enables players to resume exactly where they left off across multiple titles, ensuring gamers can get right back to the fun in an instant. All of those advances happen at the platform level and require no additional work from title developers. That's important, we'll go to that in a second. Advancing the state of the art of the game preservation. In addition to preserving the legacy of our loyal fans who have been with us since the beginning, we enable entirely new generations of gamers to play and enjoy the timeless games from our past while respecting and honouring their creators. Beginning with Xbox One X, the compatibility team developed brand new innovations that could be applied to a hand-curated list of titles to enhance them even further than when was possible when they were first created. Techniques such as the Hoochie method, I think I'm saying that right, which enables titles to render with increased resolutions up to 4K or apply anisotropic filtering to improve the final image quality, bring these classic games up to modern standards better than ever before. With all the additional power and advancements of the Xbox Series X, the compatibility team now have a veritable playground of new capabilities to innovate and push the limits of game preservation and enhancement. The compatibility team has innovated brand new techniques that enable even more titles to run at higher resolutions and image quality while still respecting the artistic intent and vision of the original creators. We are also creating whole new classes of innovations including the ability to double the frame rate of a select, select set of titles from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second or 60 frames per second to 120 frames per second. The team also continues to listen to feedback from the community and addi on additional titles you would like to see added to the compatibility program. Resurrecting titles from history often represents, often presents a complex mix of technology and licensing challenges, but the team is committed to doing everything we can to continue to preserve our collective gaming legacy. We can't wait to share more with you as we get closer to the launch of the Xbox Series X this holiday. Oh, that was a big one, but I thought it was important to kind of add everything. I didn't want to take things out of context, especially some of the technical parts, because the technical parts of um, the Xbox Series X is not my strong suit. I'm learning as much as I can. Um, but my, my, my biggest thought on this is Xbox and Microsoft have really, really doubled down on compatibility ever since, as Jason said, they introduced it back at E3 2015. This is a big change and a big divergence between Sony and between Microsoft. Okay, And that's particularly when Sony have recently come out and said that they're not going to be supporting new games on the PlayStation 4. 
they're only going to be supporting next-gen games on PlayStation 5. Um, now, from a Sony perspective, that's not me bashing them, because I don't do that. But that's that's right for them, because at the end of the day, they still run the model, which they've run for many years now, which is, if you want to play PlayStation 5 games, you have to own a PlayStation 5, right? Microsoft have taken a different approach. They have now taken an approach of, right, an Xbox title is a now a multi-platform title that you can run wherever you want. So it's not just a case of the title belonging to a console. The title belongs to your account, your Xbox Live account. You can play the title on the Xbox One if you don't want to upgrade yet. Fine. You can play the title on the Xbox Series X. You can play the title on xCloud. You can play the title on PC. There are so many different ways in which you can play an Xbox game now that that model is now irrelevant for Microsoft because they now see the value in software, whereas Sony still see the value in hardware in terms of sales. Microsoft are now running down the approach of, right, what's more beneficial for us? We are locking a small group of gamers to a player base on the Xbox One, which was small at one point. It's, it's progressed a lot in the last couple of years, but it was small compared to PlayStation 4. Or we see the value in actually, the value is with the games. And the value is how we can generate revenue from the games and through software sales and through services that apply to that, such as Game Pass, such as microtransactions in an ethical way. Because there is, I think there is an ethical way of doing microtransactions. And I think for the most part, Microsoft have got that well. There's been a few things like Gears 5 wasn't great. Halo 5 wasn't great. But that some, some things like Sea of Thieves, which is all cosmetic, I think it's been really good. So they've kind of taken that model and gone a different direction. And compatibility is at the heart of that because they're now saying your games are compatible with all our devices and all our platforms, but you can also go backwards and you can go forwards. So I like collecting, when I can, limited edition Xbox One controllers, right? I've got the Gears 5 Kate Diaz controller, I've got the new Cyberpunk 2077 controller, and I've got the Sea of Thieves um, controller, which I managed to get secondhand um, a little while ago. I also have my Halo 5 controllers, the Lock and Chief controller, right? Now, they're a bit outdated. I've played with those for like four years and the springs have gone in the analog stick, so I probably won't use them again. But the idea I can take my collection of controllers and still use them on the Series X is brilliant. Like, that's fantastic because now I feel like it's not a wasted purchase, which is why I went and got this Cyberpunk controller because I know I'm not going to have just a couple of months to use it because I know I'm going to have hopefully a year or so to use it before I wear it out by playing too much because I can use it on the Series X. Like, this compatibility model is so strong for Xbox right now for Microsoft. And the one thing I will say, though, is it's not just about backwards compatibility. What I'm ultimately going to judge Xbox and Microsoft on is the quality of their next-gen games. I'm going to judge them on Halo Infinite on the Series X. I'm going to judge them on Hellblade 2 on the Series X. I'm going to judge them on whatever Get Forza game on the Series X. Like, at the same time, as long as these games are pushing the limits of the Series X and they're looking incredible and next-gen and all the rest of it on the Series X and they're not being hindered by the backwards compatibility part, then this is a win-win for everyone, because we're getting high-quality next-gen games that are pushing the boundaries of this console, but also respecting that there are a lot of people on the Xbox One who still want to play these games. Now, we know they're not going to support Xbox One support forever, but they have stated for the next, at least the next couple of years, probably two years, they will support the Xbox One. And that's great. I think that's brilliant, you know? And... This is what pro-consumer is all about. And Microsoft have been incredibly pro-consumer the last four years. And they deserve credit for that. And I don't think they get enough credit for it. You know, not being forced into a never-ending cycle of remasters. This can eliminate remasters. I thought remasters was a shady business practice anyway. But you, allowing developers now and third-party developers to use smart delivery means we're not have, being constantly forced into paying another 50 quid or paying another 60 bucks here or there, which is, I think, good. It's pro-consumer for everyone. And the, the fact that all these backwards compatible games are going to run natively on the Series X hardware, the CPU, the GPU, and the SSD, means these games are going to look even better. So now, if you want to go back and play an older game, the best place to play that game isn't going to be on the original hardware. It's going to be the new hardware, the next-gen hardware. And the other thing I think was very important... Um, which I think might go under the radar, is where Jason says, 
uh, talking about quick resume, he says, all these advances happen at the platform level. They require no additional work for title developers. That is so important because some people have been talking about how developers are going to be hindered and how they're going to be held back and the next gen games aren't going to be as good if they're having to put games on older devices. I think at the same time, that might slightly be true, but if everything is being done on a platform level by the, the console itself, I think that's surely going to help developers. I could be wrong on that. I'm not a developer and my knowledge of development, game development isn't that great, but I think this is a win-win. So I think it's very good. I'm very glad that they're very happy that they're open and transparent and get about this yet again. Um, it proves a lot. And speaking of being open and transparent, we move into item number two. Phil Spencer says you haven't understood the true power of next-gen games yet and feels good about holiday launch. So this comes via two articles from GameSpot and GamesRadar. This mainly focuses around Phil Spencer speaking on Reggie Field Ames' uh, new podcast, um, which I'm going to have to check out at some point. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. But I've got the quotations here, which we can kind of dive into. Uh, so based on the holiday launch, um, this comes from, I think this is the Games Radar article, which I'll, again, I'll leave in the link in the description. Asked by Phil's Ames whether things were still, quote, on track as they relate to the Xbox Series X launch timeline, Spencer summarised his generous reply with confidence. Quote, we've had to work through some challenges, but we feel good about timelines. We feel really good about this holiday, end quote. He also says, quote, our supply chain we feel good about. The hardware side, it feels like we'll be able to get enough units, end quote, he said, which is important. Responding to the true power of next gen, Phil says, quote, One of the things I've talked about publicly, but it's hard to come across, is the way it feels to play games on a box where frame rates are higher, frame rates are more stable, said Spencer. Quote, The fluidity of it, showing that in video form is just impossible. How do you show how something feels? End quote. He also says, quote, we're getting to the point where the immersion feel that you get through fluidity and other things is now up to par with the visual capabilities that we have. How do you share that with people in this kind of world? End quote. Now, I think this is important because at the end of the day, we would probably be gearing up to E3 right now. E3 probably would have been, you know, a week, maybe two away. And people would have been getting very, very hyped. And the people who were going to be fortunate to get there on the game floor to play these games on the Xbox Series X, that's gone. You know, that that's not coming back for another year, by which point the console would have been already out. So I think Phil is very right in saying it's very hard to express this feeling and we're not really going to truly understand it until we get the box in our hands. And I think for a lot of people, we're going to have to take a little bit of a leap of faith here um, in the in the fall. You know, I'm a hardcore Xbox fan with an Xbox channel. I'm going to buy it regardless. But I think for a lot of people, it will require a little bit of a leap of faith. Um, and that's just unfortunately the world we live in. Um, I will say that Having been had chance to experience active demos at XO19 for the first time, which was back in November, I hadn't been to a game convention before, I hadn't been to an Xbox convention before, that was my first chance. Being able to get hands-on with some of these games, it, it makes a massive difference to just watching a trailer, right? So I managed to play Wasteland 3, okay? On mouse and keyboard, which I wasn't very good at because I'm not a great mouse and keyboard player. I'm trying to practice and get better, but, you know, having time and all this kind of stuff is a bit tricky. But I now get Wasteland... I'm watching all the Wasteland 3 developer diaries that they've been putting out on Xbox's um, YouTube channel. Watching those, I get way better because I have played the game physically. It would be harder for me to understand the game just on its own if I hadn't had that experience of playing the demo at XO19. Like... Playing demos and getting hands-on is the personal experience and attachment and feel that you get. And that's hard to translate in a demo or a, a visual demo or even a trailer. Like, it's very, very difficult to do that. So I respect the challenges that they're going up against. And I think that that's why a lot of people deserve a lot of slack at the moment um, from developer side and from hardware side and Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo and everyone else. They deserve a little bit of slack. Um, but as long as they try and show us the best they possibly can, better than what they did several weeks ago, then that's fine, you know, and we will hopefully get that with the July showcase of first party games, like, we will hopefully get those in-depth looks so that we can at least try and understand what the game will feel like, so, um, but it's very, very positive that we're going to get a holiday launch, that's, Phil has been very, very confident on this multiple, multiple times, if they were in trouble, 
I would have liked to have thought that based on the level of transparency we've had from Team Xbox and from Microsoft and from Phil and from Aaron Greenberg and all these other people, we would have heard about it by now. Because I would be very surprised if we get to like July or August and they suddenly turn around and go, yeah, by the way, that would be horrendous for them. So if they're still sticking to this, that they're confident about the fall and they're confident about the holiday, I think we'll be fine. It might mean that we there might be a few unit shortages, um, but I, that's something we have to just deal with when the time comes. So we'll see what happens. Uh, item number three, Xbox Mercury is the code name for a large Xbox store update. This comes via Windows Central. Now, this story was going around on Twitter, I saw um, over the weekend, but I thought I'd cover it just in, so to, to make people aware of what it actually is. So this comes from Windows Central. After doing some digging, it seems that this app is the code name for an upcoming Xbox store redesign rebuilt from the ground up on new architecture designed for 4K TVs. This new store app is also destined for the use on next-gen systems like the Xbox Series X, and long rumored Xbox Lockhart, as well as current gen Xbox One. For what we've seen so far, the design of the Mercury Store app is almost identical to what is available on Xbox One consoles today, with many of the changes appearing to be under the hood. It's possible that more features design changes will occur as the app moves closer to public testing, especially given the modernized design language we see in apps like the Xbox Beta app and Xbox Game Bar on PC. If you try to install the Mercury from the Xbox Store to your console right now, the download simply fails but it probably won't be too long until the testers in the alpha and alpha skip ahead rings are able to take a closer look at it. Uh, this came from looks like Xbox Insiders, um, which I am part of, but I don't actively do anything because I simply just don't have the time, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, there, it seems that we're going to get an Xbox Store refresh and hopefully a Windows 10 Store refresh for people on PC because I heard, unfortunately, a lot of people were having problems with Windows 10 Store around Minecraft Dungeons launch, stuff like that, which is a shame because I feel like the Windows 10 store and people having problems with the Windows 10 store, it just takes away some of the... A lot of people just automatically think it's the problem with the games and the actual fact is not. So I think the Windows 10 store, from what I've heard from people playing on PC, has needed a big upgrade for quite a while. So hopefully that will come with the launch of the Series X and some of the innovations they're doing on PC. Um, the Xbox store having an upgrade is great. You know, it's useful and hopefully makes it more accessible. So... We will, as soon as anything else comes out about Xbox Mercury, again, I will let you know. And item number four, a good feel story, this. Minecraft Dungeons drops with a bang, with new DLC coming as soon as July. That's from Xbox Wire. Um, you probably already know that we're currently working on new content for Minecraft Dungeons, especially if you've purchased the Hero Edition. However, what you might not know is that the first of the two planned DLCs, Jungle Awakens, is coming in July. In this adventure, you'll enter a distant, dangerous jungle to fight a mysterious power in three new missions to defeat the terrors hidden among the vines. You will have new weapons, armor, and artifacts at your disposal. Once you've had enough of that jungle heat, you'll explore some frozen peaks in creeping winter. This addition to Minecraft Dungeons will be coming later this year, so keep an eye on this blog and our socials for future sneak peeks. Uh, this is great. I love hearing news about this because Minecraft Dungeons, for me, has been a great game. I love playing the game. It's been really, really good. Again, check out my review if you uh, wish to see what I think about it in more detail. But the idea of having DLC, like, within the space of, what, a month and a bit? A bit we haven't had a confirmed detail in July, but it'll probably be about six weeks from the original release of the game. Is great. Um, and I think what's going to happen with this... So I have Minecraft Dungeons via Game Pass. What I presume is going to happen is you're going to have to pay for the DLC... Um, similar to what Forza Horizon 4 did with the LEGO Speed Champions DLC. I can't speak for any other games because I haven't used the DLC in any other games. Maybe like State of Decay 2, Sea of Thieves' stuff is all free. Um, but LEGO Speed Champions DLC, I think that was like £20? $25 maybe? Um, it was great, and it was massive, and it was brilliant. But I would assume if you have Minecraft Dungeons through Game Pass, you will have to pay for the DLC, which is absolutely fine. I don't mind doing that at all. Um, if you have the Hero Edition, great, it's already included, seemingly. Um, and another set of DLC coming in the, I would assume the fall, uh, probably around about maybe October, November time, maybe, um, with around the release of the Series X potentially, uh, it would be great. So, great news for Minecraft Dungeons fans out there, including me. Uh, glad we're going to get some more content. That will take the level count up to 13, which sounds good. I thought 10 
originally I thought 10 was a bit short, but having now, now that I'm going through it on the higher difficulties, it's challenging. Like, you will not just, unless you're a very, very, very gifted player, you're not simply just going to breeze through this game, which is the replay, the replayability of Minecraft Dungeons has been brilliant. So, there we go. More Minecraft Dungeons stuff to look forward to. Uh, so that's it for the Xbox Treasure for news. We're going to go into Game Pass Gems. There's not much to talk about Game Pass Gems wise, but the big news is that No Man's Sky is coming in June. Um, no Man's Sky was originally released as a PlayStation exclusive. Uh, it's now been on, I think it's now been on Xbox for a little while now, and now it's coming to Game Pass, which is good. So there's a there's a revival for No Man's Sky has really turned itself around. Like it had a lot of problems when it was over on PlayStation. That's not PlayStation's fault. It was just the game had the game had a, quite a few issues. And I think it. It got a bit bashed on because of some of the, the because of the way the game was marketed. People weren't very happy or impressed with how it ended up turning out. But the idea that this game gets another chance here on Game Pass is, is brilliant. So I wish the best of luck for them. Uh, game Pass uh, games with gold hoarders. Uh, we have some new games for June because it's that time of the month. So we have Shanty and the Pirates Curse available June the first to June the thirtieth on Xbox One. We have Coffee Talk available from June sixteenth to July fifteenth on Xbox One. Destroy All Humans, available June 1st to the 15th on Xbox One and Xbox 360. And Sin Mora, available June the 16th to the 30th on Xbox One and Xbox 360. I'll quickly give you a rundown of those games. So Shanty and the Pirate's Curse, embark on an exciting adventure with your favourite hair-whipping, belly-dancing genie. Uh, after losing her magic ability, Shanty must team up with her nefarious nemesis, Risky Boot, in order to save uh, Sequin? Sequin Land. Uh... Play, uh, slay monsters, battle epic bosses, and obtain new weapons in a quest to remove an evil curse from the land and gain back her magical powers in the process. Coffee talk. Lend an ear to your customers as you serve up hot drinks behind the bar. As a barista owner in this soothing and relaxing game, immerse yourself in the stories of the city's fantasy inhabitants where progression is based on the variety of beverages you serve. You will easily get invested in the strong narrative of your customers' lives while playing this timely character interaction simulator. Destroy all humans. Uh, experience the other side of an alien invasion as you conquer Earth as part of the ooh, Cryptosporidium 137 Armada. Uh, take over all humanity via land or air using a variety of alien weaponry. Fire, ray guns, throw cows, or even disguise yourself as a puny human as you take one giant step on mankind. And Sign Mora. Uh, time, the ultimate, time is the ultimate factor. Rather than traditional health status bar, this old school style shoot 'em up sets itself apart by focusing on massive destruction and time manipulation. With gorgeously crafted stages and deeply challenging story and arcade modes, you will test your abilities in this excellent entry in the shmup, what, shmup genre. I think that's how you say it. And finally, Xbox Store Stash. We've got quite a few things to go through for this week's Xbox Store Stash. Uh, Strawberry Vinegar launches on June 3rd. In this visual novel, save your soul from being devoured by making delicious food. Sakuraba Rai is a cynical and grumpy girl who cares uh, little for her fellow classmates and does not have a single friend. That is until a self-proclaimed demon from the deepest, darkest pits of hell suddenly appears in Rai's kitchen and steals a tray of cookies. Sounds interesting. Uh, Depth of Extinction, June 3rd. Xbox One X Enhanced. In a flood future world, killer uh, machines are plotting mankind's demise as the sole defender of humanity's last government. Only you can create the ultimate squad and save humanity in this turn-based tactical RPG with roguelike elements. Awesome P2, June 3rd, Xbox One X Enhanced. Now with even more dark dungeons, deadly traps and gold, Awesome P2 is the next chapter of a classic platformer game with pixel Game Boy style graphics, 25 levels, a retro soundtrack and lots of shiny coins. Uh, Tour de France 2020, June the 4th. Um... Experience the intensity of the Tour de France with the official game. To wear the yellow jersey on the Champs Elysees, will you will need to take risks, attack, sprint, and perfect your rare your race tactics. Try out the new immersive first-person camera and test it in the iconic Liege Baston Liege race. I think that's how you say it. With the all-new time trial gameplay, a great way to experience the Tour de France in lieu of its postponement this year. Uh, to check out in the Castle of Lucio, June fifth. Xbox One X Enhanced. Tocheco in the Castle of Lu uh, Lucio is a challenging 8-bit 2D platformer with non-stop action that incentivizes quick thinking, platforming, precision and memorization. Visually and from an auditory standpoint, everything about the game is designed to look and feel like an old school 8-bit game. Uh, Out Buddies DX June the 5th. Experience real non-linear Metroidvania gameplay and uncover five distinct areas, all with remarkable puzzles, environmental hazards 
epic boss encounters and captured Wozen in uncage, uh, to uncage. The, unlocal, the local co-op option invites a second player to explore and experience this adventure together. Support each other on your journey home, solve puzzles and overcome Barlam's hostile maze. The Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle, June 5th. Play to change and make a difference in the Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle expansion pack. Moving into a community of fellow collaborative makers to help your new neighbours decide on the community space project, reduce your eco footprint and watch your neighbourhood transform. Ready for, ready, your Sims, ready for your Sims to impact their world. Requires a Sims 4 base game to play. Uh, we were here together June the 5th. Embark on a puzzle solving adventure in which you and your partner must prove must prove you can communicate and work together to escape the haunted castle rock. You and your partner start out with nothing but your wits and walkie talkie each. Observation, smart communication and teamwork will be the only way to escape the sinister castle. Uh, Rigid Force Redux June 5th. Classic shoot 'em up action in modern 3D. Blast off and take down hoarders of infected aliens and dreadful machines programmed by waging an intergalactic war against mankind. Arm your fighters with numerous upgradable weapon systems, collect energy orbs to fill up your energy supply and eventually unleash an extremely powerful blast against your foes. And finally, Cyber Protocol June 5th, Xbox One X enhanced an arcade puzzle game set in a cyberpunk world with a strong di and dynamic gameplay. If you want to test your lo logical skills and reflex and, your love the re and you love the retro style and good energetic music, grab a controller, all of the Android uh, GOX6's life processes were shut down and the only way to bring him back is to hack his security system and manually start the recovery protocol. Can you save your friends and prove you're the best hacker in this lawless city? Well, there you go, folks. That is everything for this week's episode of X Marks the Spot. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please make sure you leave a like, you head over to Installation X and subscribe, and you hit that bell for notifications of future uploads, and support the channel on the road to 1,000 subs. Don't forget all the sources and all the time codes in the description if you need them. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Follow the channel on social media with links in the description. And as always, I'm Sykes, and for all things Xbox, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye, guys.